Now functors are kind of weird. I haven't figured out like a really good example of how to use it, except I might use it for something like a logger. So in a large program, I might have a logger that keeps track of where I, a function starts or ends or different places in the code so I can kind of track values. And if it crashes, I can find things a little bit easier. So with a functor, a functor, <laughs> Uh, we're basically writing something that looks like a function, but it has a state. So that state can change. Are you in state A or state B or state C? Um, that could define different behaviors or we could have some sort of variable relating to it. Um, but it's just kind of a way to use a class and the parentheses operator to make a function that we can use elsewhere, but also have a little bit of information stored for that function. So what I'm going to do is I have a example program and we're going to add logging to it. So I already have these kind of pre put in here. It's just a simple program that lets you enter two numbers. It multiplies them and displays the result and you can quit afterwards or keep looping. And I have some logs for like, what were the user's inputs? Uh, what was the result? The user decided to quit or to get continue and so on. So for my functor, we'll do class logger. And I'm going to create a OF stream output. So that means we're going to output to a text file stream need that library. And with the constructor, we'll set a file name. So when we create our logger thing, we will open the file name float operator. This is where the functor part comes in. If we set this up. This is going to overload the parentheses operator and we can basically make it look like a function call. I mean, technically this is also a function, but it'll look a little different and you'll see it in a moment. So if we call the loggers log, whatever we declare it as, so for down here, So down here, let's declare a logger variable. If I use this variable as a function, that calls this function. So if we're passing in some data, we can possibly display it to the screen. And then also let's display it to the text file. So we can display each of the loops, user number entered and so on. And when I run this, uh, I need the string stream for that one. We're not really talking about this, but this is just to convert a non string data type to a string. And it did not like that because I did not pass in a file name, which is what is needed. So we'll just say log.txt. We'll run that. And this simple program, we're just entering stuff program itself is not important, but we can see the log statements are outputted to the screen. User selected quit. Uh, run again is just to the out to the screen output, not to the text file. Result was six that was outputted to the log and so on. And when I open up the folder for this one, it is here. And if we open up this log, we can see the same data here. And so we could do this sort of thing, but have a separate logger. So let's say error log errors.txt. Let's say this is, I don't know, dividing instead. And if they entered, if B is zero, we'll do an error log and we'll say, um, oh no, it was an error. Cannot divide by zero. Or we don't want that part there. So 
The same functionality occurs, it still does this either way, but the state is we have a log.txt or an errors.txt. So when I run this again, we'll do five and zero, and it says, oh no, oh, and then it, I didn't <laughs> really handle that error correctly, so it just crashed. Um, so if it's, if it's not that, let's go ahead and put int result right there, and we'll do the calculation here if we don't have that error. We'll just assign this to a weird number, not really the best way to handle errors, but we'll do that anyway. So cannot divide by zero. We can run it again, and if we have a valid fraction, that's fine, and so on. And now over here, we have the log. Here's the um, that version, and it says the result was negative 999. But if I open up the errors log, it'll also say, oh no, that it was an error, cannot divide by zero. So that's, I think, a pretty useful way of using functors. Though when I've implemented it in other projects, I tend to um, just have a big class that does all sorts of stuff. So I don't remember what it is. So I just have a static class. I could make it a functor, but there, I have a lot of other stuff in there as well. 